We believe that all men are created equal. It's a magnificent mosaic that is America. From radio beacon to radio beacon. I have a dream. Change has come to America. Believe me. Help is on the way. Knock, knock. Who's there? Hey. It's a figment of your imagination. Randy Road Show. Turn up your mind. As I stand here tonight, equality and democracy are under assault. We do ourselves no favor to pretend otherwise. Donald Trump and the MAGA Republicans represent an extremism that threatens the very foundations of our republic. Not every Republican, not even the majority of Republicans are MAGA Republicans. Hmm. Not every Republican embraces their extreme ideology. I know because I've been able to work with these mainstream Republicans. But there's no question that the Republican Party today is dominated, driven, and intimidated by Donald Trump and the MAGA Republicans. And that is a threat to this country. But while the threat to American democracy is real, I want to say as clearly as we can, we are not powerless in the face of these threats. Our task is to make our nation free and fair, just and strong, noble and whole. And this work is the work of democracy, the work of this generation. It is the work of our time, for all time. We can't afford to have, leave anyone on the sidelines. We need everyone to do their part. So speak up, speak out, get engaged, vote, vote, vote. And you can hear him being heckled there as he knocks it out of the park. And, of course, uh, the heckler was recognized. And uh, Joe Biden said, listen, no, don't uh, shut him down. He has the right to be outrageous. Good manners has never been something that uh, MAGA has suffered from. That was well played, well handled. You know, in in 24 minutes, it was a, a fairly short but important barn burner of a speech there that he gave uh, to send out the flare, the warning that, uh, you know, we've been uh, trying to push out there forever, that American democracy is on the ballot. American democracy is under threat. And it's under threat by what I've told you is an ever shrinking portion of the country. And I'm really thrilled that Joe Biden went to such great lengths to say that what he's talking about is a minority of this country, but it is a portion of the Republican Party, uh, about 30% of 25% of Americans would be fairly accurate, that are a bunch of election denier, uh, election denying, violent, anti-Semitic, Q-believing, you know, uh, replacement theory loving, uh, people who believe that I am some sort of a satanic pedophile that drinks the blood of children, you know, um, and defend things like Charlottesville, Jews will not replace us, right? And January 6th, which was violence perpetrated against the United States Capitol by beating police officers in order to go hunt down Nancy Pelosi and Mike Pence in order to hang them. Now, these things really did happen, okay? As much as, you know, Kevin McCarthy wishes they didn't or as much as Lindsey Graham is, is warning there'll be blood in the streets if anybody pays for the crimes that have been committed by this president, right? Um, proving... Biden's point last night that there is a very large extremist element in elected Republican officials and that when elected Republican officials went to toss their hat into the ring for this particular uh, 2022 midterm election, they were sorted and they were sorted by their willingness to call Democrats, communists, slash fascists, slash pedophiles, slash satanic blood drinkers, slash, uh, you know, uh, uh, um, whatever, whatever pejorative. And now, and now the irony, the Republicans think that calling them out is hurtful. (laughs) 
It hurts. It hurts so much. Well, listen, you know, maybe you should have, uh, you know, planned for a rebuttal last night. Maybe you could have sent Lindsey Graham out to warn about riots in the street. As Joe Biden sounded the clarion call that violent extremists have taken over the Republican Party. You know, maybe you could have had, uh, you know, a rebuttal planned with, oh, I don't know, Kyle Rittenhouse standing there, you know, uh, shooting people in the name of self-defense. Or maybe you could have had Newt Gingrich do the rebuttal while he threatens to jail all his political opponents for investigating the removal of classified documents or for insinuating, insinuating that the election was stolen, that the election was rigged, that Donald Trump won even after January 6th, which is what he did. And this is why the January 6th committee wants to talk to Newt now. Newt! Everything old is newt again. I mean, it's just, it's, it's unbelievable what's going on. But Biden nailed it. He, he called the GOP that is currently serving the Ron Johnsons and the J.D. Vances and the Mehmet Oz's and the Lindsey Graham's and the, you know, Mitch McConnell. It's, it's very interesting because maybe you wanted a rebuttal by an elder statesman. So maybe the rebuttal should have been given by a Mitch McConnell who could have just lamented the quality of candidates running for the United States Senate as Republicans this particular year. Maybe you could have had him wringing his hands or something. I I really don't know. But, you know, look, the idea that we named what Donald Trump and his minions stand for, and that is chaos and violence and white supremacy and racism and anti-Semitic tropes and replacement theory and Q uh, uh, conspiracy theories and and calling us, us, the people who are willing to do the heavy lifting to get, I mean, you know, listen, Mitch McConnell, he said yet again that his entire reason for being in the United States Senate was to stop Joe Biden from having any wins, any legislative wins. Well, he must be losing his edge or his touch or whatever it is, his control over his party. I have no idea because he is definitely on the losing end of that argument this time around. Biden has beaten Mitch McConnell at the Senate game. Maybe electing somebody who served in the Senate for 37 freaking years had a plus side. Maybe it was a benefit. Maybe it was, a, you know, the upside. Who knows? But Mitch McConnell is losing. And his Republicans are radical. Just look at the crap they voted against. They voted against the American Rescue Plan in the middle of a pandemic, okay? They voted against the PACT Act, which was just to give veterans health insurance after being exposed to uh, KBR Halliburton's toxic burn pits where they developed weird cancers and respiratory diseases. They voted against a very moderate background check bill doesn't even force anybody to do a background check it incentivizes states to do the background check by giving them money and they voted against that they voted against infrastructure who votes against infrastructure if you love your country and you can clearly see bridges are falling down trains are derailing you can clearly see roads are full of potholes and and there are roads that have yet to be built they do we were able to get some climate change money out the door. We were able to get some health care subsidies out the door. We were able to do debt reduction on top of all this. And we did it by increasing taxes on companies that show that they've made over a billion dollars and have paid no taxes on it. By insisting that they pay a 15% minimum tax, which is far less than the rate that I pay as somebody who is self-employed by a small business. We lowered prescription drug prices. We said, oh, you know what? Medicare is the largest purchaser of prescription drugs. Wouldn't it be a good idea if we used that awesome power to negotiate with Big Pharma? They voted against that. He's losing, and he's losing badly. And America is, is knowing this. They're feeling it. They get it. We've got a jobs report today. It was stellar. Wages went up another 5.2% from last year. Unemployment, about the same. It looks like we have a soft landing from what was supposed to be an ugly recession where people were thrown out of work and there'd be hell to pay. No, with them there would. With them there would. With us, soft landing. All good. 
all things Randy at RandyRhodes.com. Go, go for launch. Speaking truth to power, the Randy Rhodes Show. Democracy cannot survive when one side believes there are only two outcomes to an election. Either they win or they were cheated. And that's where the MAGA Republicans are today. (laughs) They don't understand what every uh, patriotic American knows. You can't love your country only when you win. It's fundamental. It is pretty basic. (laughs) I don't know why, uh, you know, uh, MAGA has such a hard time with that concept that you can't only love your country when you win. Otherwise, you were cheated. And that is why people are going to jail now for 10 years, for seven years, for six years, for five years, for four and a half years. Lawyers are now being indicted. Lawyers for the Proud Boys are being indicted for obstructing the investigation, for suborning perjury, for hiding documents. This is an epidemic with this party. This is the most dishonest, uh, fake, patriotic party I've ever seen in my life. They don't, they don't love this country. They love a person. They love an autocrat. They're loyal to a man, a man who stole, and now we know, this is amazing. So again, uh, the Trump lawyers, I don't, I don't even know what to call them, but the Trump liars, uh, they, <laughs> they just got punched in the face yet again. So they went to the special, they went to the court here in uh, Palm Beach, okay, West Palm Beach. They went to the court uh, there, the Trump, the Trump uh, you know, people did. And they moved the court to appoint a special master. We're waiting any minute for the verdict from the judge on that. But in the meantime, the Department of Justice responded. We got 36 pages with photographic evidence, which just laid bare what the FBI found in cartons in Magaloco that this man stole from the American people, because it's ours, uh, the librarians. <laughs> actually put their foot down you know god love a librarian because they're they're being attacked by the gop every way to sunday that you could possibly imagine you got wrong death sentence here not only is he banning non-fiction or fiction books uh, by pulitzer prize winning novelists i mean he's banning the bluest eye by tony morrison uh but he's banning math books math books so it, it, you know it used to be a, a cliche to say just do the math well you won't be able to future generations won't be able to because ron doesn't want you to anyway their attack on books It's so apropos, it's so um, the height of irony. It's an O. Henry play, okay, that we got here on our hands where the librarians are, uh, you know, exacting their revenge against the GOP who's trying to, you know, impede librarians, librarians. I mean, it's amazing. So, you know, the, the, the right wing has taken this uh, little thing of mine and they've, they've played it up, right? So now they're saying, oh, yeah, so it's like he stole a library book. They raided his home for stealing a library book. Yes, if it was a, a rare first edition of the Constitution, that would be almost analogous, but not really, because these are our crown jewels of secrets, okay? And this man stole them and took them and put them in cartons in in an insecure beach club where he chooses to live. And now today we find out that there were 11, oh my God, hang on everybody, 11,000 documents, 11,000 presidential records that Donald Trump stole. Now, 43 were empty, empty classified folders. 43 of them were folders marked classified, but they were empty. Whatever secrets were inside and held in those classified folders, they're gone. They're not in the file. Where did they go? Ask Sarah, because she can see it from her porch. Where did they go? 28 empty folders were labeled return to staff secretary slash military aid. Two empty folders were labeled return to um, staff secretary slash military aid that were from 2016 to 2018. Uh, two empty, uh, eight empty folders were labeled return to staff secretary slash military aid also 2016 to 2018. 
Uh, one empty folder with classified banners from 2016 to 17. Two empty folders with classified banners 2017 to 18. And two empty folders labeled return to staff secretary slash military aid 17 to 18. And 43 empty folders with classified banners on them. 11,000 total documents. You know, 11,000. You know how heavy that is? You know how heavy that is? Listen, I have a lot of paper, as you can see. I deforest North Carolina each and every day when I produce this show for myself, right? So a ream of paper is like 500 uh, uh, sheets of paper. I get 10 reams at a time when I make my office order, and they're so heavy, just 10 reams of paper, which would be, what, 5,000 pages, weighs so much that the, I feel so bad for the delivery guy who has to bring it in on a hand truck, okay? And we're upstairs. So he has to bring it in on a hand truck in an elevator to the second floor where we are. Okay. Double that. That's what he stole. That's what the FBI recovered. That's a lot of paper that didn't belong to him. That some of it, like I said, was just presidential records. Some of it wasn't classified, but there were tons of classified materials, over 100 documents in this last hall that were top secret, secret compartmentalized information. Uh, some of it was SI. SI is signals intelligence. You know what that means? Know what that means? That's like um, tape recordings or recorded conversations or um, anything that happened uh, you know, over the phone that might have been recorded, things like that. That's signals intelligence. Now, it's very interesting that back after, uh, when you go back to like after January 6th, right, you had Kevin McCarthy on the floor saying that Trump bears the blame for this and it was the darkest day, the worst day of his life as a, as a House member. He can't remember a day that was worse than this, right? Remember? The president bears responsibility for Wednesday's attack on Congress by mob rioters. He should have immediately denounced the mob when he saw what was unfolding. Mm -hmm. These facts require immediate action by President Trump. Accept his share of responsibility. Quell the brewing unrest, and ensure President-elect Biden is able to successfully begin his term. And the President's immediate action also deserves congressional action, oh. which is why I think a fact-finding commission and a censure resolution would be prudent. <laughs> Unfortunately, that is not where we are today. Truly, this past week was one of the most difficult for Congress and our nation. Okay, remember that? Remember that? And then what happened? Then what happened? So then he goes down to Magaloco. And I don't know what he was shown or what he was listening to or what happened after, while he was there. But after that, he was totally okay with January 6th. He was down with Trump. It wasn't his fault. We didn't need a commission, a fact-finding one or any other one. There would be no censure. And he voted against a select committee to investigate it. What happened at MAGA Logo? Call in, connect. Speak to Randy. Call 561-270-3844. 561-270-3844. Just released a damning list of the highly sensitive government documents the FBI found in its search of Donald Trump's Mar-a-Lago. The seven-page inventory was unsealed this morning, mm. a short time ago, by a federal judge, along with a second government court filing that made very clear, very, very clear, the depth of the former president's legal troubles. The volume of paper we are talking about here is stunning. Take a look. 18 documents marked top secret. Mm. 54 documents marked secret. Mm. 31 documents marked confidential. Four dozen empty folders. Yes, empty folders oh, marked no. classified. 11,000 non-classified government documents as oh, well, okay. intermixed with stuff, clothing, gifts, mementos, magazines, other press clippings. We now have a much clearer picture about the sheer number of things the FBI hauled away, but little more specific content about the specific content and the range of subject matters in those documents. But we did get this from the second newly released document. The Justice Department telling that judge its review of the materials removed from our Largo is part of a, quote, active criminal investigation. Damn. 
it's happening this is on it's is it's it's criminal it it, it 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 is unbelievable what's going on with this person with this with this man i can't tell you how many of my friends are coming to me now and they're like can i actually believe this now like is this actually happening it's, the, it's crazy everybody kind of getting kind of excited you know what i mean yeah, well, you know what's interesting? We never would have known. This would have been, you know, just a uh, DOJ investigation into Donald Trump, and all we would have ever known was that there was a, a, an executed search warrant on Magaloco, right? And th that's where we would be as far as information from the Department of Justice had it not been for these liars that represent Donald Trump asking the court for a special master all of this additional information those 36 pages we got at the beginning of the week okay and now this list of what was actually retrieved from magaloco the the only this 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 list was uh received uh, because the judge here in west palm beach the trump appointed federalist society membership owning judge judge cannon is the judge that said, okay, you can release the receipts in detail of what you took. We never would have seen this. We never would have known this. Had they, the Trump camp, gone, and if they had not gone to court to request a freaking special master two weeks after the filtration team completed the filtering of documents to Make sure that no attorney-client privileged information was included in what was seized in the execution of the search warrant. We would never know. We would have no earthly idea what was going on with this investigation. Now we know it's a criminal investigation. Now we know it's an ongoing criminal investigation. Now we know that this was just the beginning of a criminal investigation. Now we know they had 11,000 presidential records that they retrieved, some of them mixed in with clothes and shoes and pantaloons. Ew. Okay, we know now that there were 18 top secret uh, documents there and that they had lied, they, that, that Donald Trump uh, asserted to his lawyers under penalty of perjury and his lawyers agreed that they had done due diligence and they saw nothing that was uh, responsive to the subpoena with regard to additional classified material remaining in Magaloco. Now we found uh, 100 additional Responsive documents, 18 of them top secret, 54 of them uh, a secret, 31 of them uh, uh, classified, and 48 empty classified folders, 48 empty ones that they found mingled inside. You want to know why they went into Melania's closet? Now you know why they went into Melania's closet. They found these documents mingled with items of clothing, shoes, uh, in the desk drawer of the president. They found three classified i mean the disregard and the careless nature in which they treated the crown jewels of the united states the secrets that keep us safe at night is it's legendary it's legion it's amazing and so you know now we know so much more than we would have known oh and you want to hear something amazing so bill barr was booked on uh faux news right and they were, you know, trying to get Bill Barr to say this was wrong. This was, you know, this was a, an assault on democracy itself, which is what Kevin McCarthy said last night. I mean, Kevin McCarthy is such a disgusting human being. I, I, there are no words for the, the, the way that he poses himself as being a patriot, right? Uh, he, he, it, it, it takes your breath away, but, but also it begs the question, what intercepted communications what signals intelligence did donald trump have or had on kevin mccarthy that would make kevin mccarthy go from saying the president bears blame we need a special committee we need a censure we need a deep dive into this violence it was the worst day the darkest day for people in congress i've never seen a day darker i'm going to get to the bottom. and then he goes to magaloco and he comes back and he's kissing the ring so what in the world was in the signals intelligence? What, which is a fancy way for saying intercepted communications, right? That's what signals intelligence is. And uh, all of a sudden, you know, he was fine with everything. And, and now yesterday he said, Joe Biden and a politicized Department of Justice launched a raid on the home of his top political rival, Donald Trump. 
That is an assault on democracy. Okay, Joe Biden didn't arrange for anything. This is the independent Department of Justice. Merrick Garland took complete and full responsibility for uh, asking for and executing that search warrant on Magaloco. And the fruits of their labor are now laid bare. And Kevin McCarthy is once again defending the indefensible. Why? Why is he doing that? It, 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 it is unbelievable. Anyway, so Bill Barr actually chimed in on Fox News when they asked him, you know, don't you think this is an assault on democracy? Don't you think this is wrong? <laughs> the whole idea of a special master is a bit of a red herring. Uh, the only documents that have been taken, it seems to me, that there's a legitimate uh, concern about keeping away from the government and insulating the government from would be documents relating to his private lawyer communications, him as an individual and his outside lawyers. If there's stuff like that, fine, identify it. it there doesn't appear to be much of it. Oh. I'm not sure you need a special master to identify it. But <laughs> what people are missing is that all the other documents taken, even if they claim to be executive privilege, either belong to the government because they're government records, even if they're classified, even if they're uh, subject to executive privilege. They still belong to the government and go to the archives. And any other documents that were seized, like news clippings and other things that were in the boxes containing the classified uh, information, those were seizable under the warrant because they show the conditions under which the classified information was being held. So I think it's a red herring. Uh, I think it would, you know, at this stage, since they've already gone through the documents, I think it's a waste of time. <laughs> Ouch. Sam, I guess he got his money's worth. I mean, Amy is on the Supreme Court. Kavanaugh is on the Supreme Court. Gorsuch is on the, you know, he got, uh, he, 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 he did his, his, his piece of the caper. But he's out now. Now I got to turn my back on you. <laughs> $3,200 for a lifetime of work. That's what Paulie gave me, $3,200. Yeah, no, he, he's done with the caper. He's out. <laughs> It's the Randy Rhodes Show. It is. Speak with Randy. Dial 561-270-3844. That's 561-270-3844. Okay, here, here's Kevin McCarthy trying to be all statesmanlike and such. The electric cord of liberty still sparks in our hearts. <laughs> so what you're saying is you're a tool. The electric cord of liberty still sparks. In our heart. Somebody needs to tell Kevin McCarthy that, um, you know, every electrician out there listening to that says, you know, electric cord sparking is not a good thing. That is not good. <laughs> All I could think of were the drivers in Florida. You ever see one where their seatbelt is like hanging out the door and it's sparking up the highway? <laughs> Kevin, what the hell was that visual? The electric cord of liberty still sparks within our hearts. Not a good metaphor, not a good visual, like super freaking weirdly dangerous and just, I mean, this was his attempt at trying to be a statesman. He wants to be Speaker of the House <laughs> so he can impeach Biden. On what? For what? I have no idea. Uh, but that I, I just I think that's worth another listen, don't you? I just love this. this is the fun. electric cord of liberty still sparks in our hearts. <laughs> and you can tell in his voice he's so proud of himself. He's like, I'm, na I'm nailing this. <laughs> that is the worst metaphor I've ever heard for democracy or patriotism or love of country in the history of of metaphors about love of country. I have never heard anything worse than that, ever. It's like, holy crap. But uh, that was his attempt at a rebuttal. Well, that was a pre-buttal. He said that before Biden's speech, right before. At, like proving Biden's point that these are a bunch of miscreants. These are a bunch of people who don't get you, who don't understand. You don't bet against Americans. You don't root for your country only when you win. That, you know, you are a violent minority. You are a bunch of election deniers. You are a bunch of blackmailed individuals that have decided to throw in with the dear leader who is an autocratic freaking thug. If He's a thief. He's a traitor. He's a traitor. That's probably why he couldn't connect a patriotic thought 
to his electric cord in his brain. It was so fake, so phony, so fraudulent, so forced, so bad, so terrible. Really, just uh, bizarre. Bizarre. The electric cord of liberty still sparks. The electric cord <laughs> of liberty still sparks in our hearts. <laughs> I just love that. I love it. All right, Jeff in Iowa. Yeah, uh, it's the worst national security crisis in our history, I believe. But uh, it's bad. I think we have so I have another problem. We have the big oil industries and the big pharmaceutical industries that are supporting the Republican Party and Donald Trump so badly. Uh, they're holding our gas prices up here in Iowa today. Gas prices rose before the holiday, sixty cents a gallon. What we? Yes, they jacked up the price before Labor Day weekend, 60 cents a gallon. It had been going down until the uh, Inflation Act was passed. Then it jumped back up 30-some cents a gallon. It went down a little bit, and then when they signed it into law, it went up again. Huh. So you've got the pharmaceutical industry that now we, we supposedly... Medicare can can uh, negotiate. negotiate. Mm -hmm. What what they'll do is just jack up the prices, uh, you know, three times. Well, let's hope not, because we're capped anyway uh, at two thousand dollars out of pocket going forward. So no more donut hole, which uh, you know my family has fallen into. I can't tell you every year, every year the donut hole. Every year you come out of pocket thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. So, uh, you know, listen, this is the death rattle of a dying industry or dying industries, right? This is the death rattle. This is the, the last gasps uh, 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 of profit taking. So, you know, what can I tell you? We're, we're killing it. We're slaying it. We're, we're working on it. And, uh, you know, they know it. Well, I, I just feel that, that they're so in bed with the Republican Party. Oh, they and are. One way they know, this was they know another, they just... Right. This was another Republican self-inflicted wound, okay? Throwing in with special interests, doing the bidding of uh, the Koch brothers and oil and gas and uh, everything uh, connected to it, throwing in with Big Pharma, and being an impediment to Americans being able to look forward to paying $35 a month for insulin versus $1,000 a month for insulin, you know, and, and, and only having to come out of pocket when you're on a fixed income and Medicare, only having to come out of pocket $2,000 maximum a year. Uh, no more donut hole, no more being gouged by them, no more $6,000 out of pocket and then, oh, you're covered again, which was the donut hole. This is it. They're, they're done. They're cooked. And, and the Republicans threw in with them and everybody gets that that was where their bread was buttered, and that is whose bidding they do. And, you know, they can talk populism all they want. They can stand on the stage and say, we're for the middle class. They're not for the middle class, okay? Their, their, their plan for the 21st century, their, their, their Republican, uh, you know, recovery plan, whatever it is that Rick Scott actually published for everyone to read, includes raising taxes on 57% of Americans who don't pay federal income tax it includes raising their taxes so that the, the rich don't have to be disturbed with a 15 percent minimum tax which we just got they're out there belly aching about why should i have to pay for somebody else's education when i didn't get one so the gi bill sucked too or how about this one this is my favorite this is my metaphor for what they are bellyaching about. Who died for your sins? Jesus, right? So why should Jesus have to pay for your sins? Why? <laughs> Rich in Michigan. Hey, Randy. Mm -hmm. I kind of wonder if one of those missing folders ended up in Russia because I'd like to know how they were able to put up a satellite right underneath our satellite with exact land, uh, latitude, ah, I can't even speak right, uh, longitude and latitude and trajectory to block our satellite. 
Well, you know, there is such a thing as as GPS. You know, there is such a thing as mapping. I I don't I don't think that that would have been you know like the thing. I really don't. I mean, you know, look, the idea that he tried to blackmail Zelensky and that we had, you know, like uh, weapons going over there and he held it up so that he could get dirt on Joe Biden. I think it's more something along those lines. Do you know what I mean? I I, I think, uh, you know, the stuff that probably uh, he had on Macron, which we know he had, was probably for the benefit of Marine Le Pen you know what I'm saying? I, I, I don't think it had very much to do with satellite launches because, you know, listen, uh, my car can find your satellite. You know what I'm saying? Very right done. Right. Sedona at American University in D.C.? Hello. Um, I was calling to ask just because I know a lot of very, like, longtime Republicans that are proud of their party, but things like in 2020 – they wouldn't vote for Trump, but they wouldn't vote Democrats. They did things like write Mitt Romney. And do you think that in Biden's speech last night, he really laid out the difference? And do you think that I'll make a difference in the midterm? I, I don't think that you make a difference in a speech. I think that when you pass the PACT Act and uh, over 100 Republicans vote no, I think when you pass an infrastructure bill, an infrastructure bill, and 150 Republicans vote no, I think when you do a chips and science bill and 150 Republicans vote no, when you try to lower prescription drug costs by letting Medicare negotiate and almost every Republican votes against it, I think that's where you make a difference. You're not going to make a big difference by making a speech. But what he did last night was uh, to knock it out of the park. He, it, you know, This speech was long planned, but Biden is strategic, and he understood he had all this stuff to get done first, and that we, the American people, and our business had to get done first. And then he could give a speech about how uh, public figures like Lindsey Graham are out there saying, if you prosecute this thief, this thug, if you prosecute this traitor to our nation, who actually orchestrated an insurrection, a violent one, against police officers and the Capitol building itself, and then stole top secret material and kept it in his closet and lied about it and obstructed a, a yet another investigation. I think he, he saved that till now because he put our business ahead of, uh, you know, warning us about democracy being hanging by a thread. So I think he knocked it out of the park last night, not just with the timing of it, meaning he put it off until our business was done because he cared enough to get our business done. And that what he said was short, sweet, and to the point. And he delivered that in 24 minutes. And it was hopeful. He said, we are not powerless against this. He said he saw light at the end of the tunnel. And I do, too. I do, too. It was great. Mary had a little man, man, man. The fault. We believe that all men are created equal. To the magnificent mosaic that is America. From radio beacon to radio beacon. I have a dream. Changes come to America. Believe me. Help is on the way. Knock, knock. Who's there? Hey. It's a figment of your imagination. Randy Rhodes Show. Turn up your mind. President Biden is breaking the gridlock in Washington. Inflation has been coming down and mm. gas prices are plummeting. So after months of attacking Biden on these very issues, what can Republicans attack now? Simple. They go back to the classics, like crime. Racist dog whistles disguised as police support and designed to stoke fear. A desperate attempt to distract. They don't know what to do when there's real leadership in Washington. But this old classic won't work because it's hard to be tough on crime when your party leader is a criminal. A man who stole classified documents and lied to the FBI. And this was after he participated in an attempted coup. So go ahead, Republicans, get tough on crime. If you really want to prove you need it, there's one criminal who's more than ready for his orange jumpsuit. Lincoln Project nails it. Biden nailed it. I, I Listen, this guy is a, th listen, you, you know, Bill Barr was on Fox News, you know, trashing what, uh, what, what, what Donald Trump did. Bill Barr, the guy who, who literally ran interference for Donald Trump as his attorney general, acted as if he were Donald Trump's own personal attorney. 
Why? Why did Bill Barr do that? Well, Bill Barr did that because Bill Barr is part of the 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 the, the uh, Opus Day. Opus Day is a secret uber right wing version of a closed Catholic society. It's like uh, Amy Coney Barrett. She's a uh, part of the uh, the Women of Praise. Uh, so she has to be, you know, subservient uh, to the man in the house and, and, and you know, have uh, seven kids. And anyway, this this was their wet dream to stack the court with Opus Dei people, to stack the court with people who were anti-contraception, to stack the court with people who would ban reproductive freedom. And uh, they got there. They got there. And so now Bill Barr is out. I need a wartime consigliere. Uh, poor Donald Trump can't find any consigliere. All his consiglieres need consiglieres. I, it, it is the sickest thing. It is that Lindsey Graham has to testify in Georgia now. He, he, he needs an attorney because he wants to appeal this yet again. What is he so afraid of? Why won't he just go raise his right hand and swear to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth if he didn't do anything wrong. If there's nothing to hide, why is he hiding everything? It's that old trope, right? So Lindsey Graham, the judge said he has to answer questions. She would limit the scope of his testimony to what he said to Georgia officials about throwing away ballots. And he still doesn't want to go. She narrowed the scope of what they can ask him about to exactly this one issue, and he still doesn't want to go. Newt Gingrich, he's being summoned to the January 6th committee. They're asking him to appear voluntarily. Ginny Ginny Thomas, they asked her to appear voluntarily. She said, oh, I have nothing to hide. I'll be there. And now she's got lawyers. She won't go. They are finding even more emails from Ginny to more legislators in more states. Okay, they just, we knew about 29 uh, Arizona state legislators that she had written to saying, uh, you know, you have to choose your own electors. You can't let Donald Trump lose. You have to do whatever you have to do. I feel our democracy is dying if Donald Trump isn't reinstalled. This is the wife of a Supreme Court justice, which Bill Barr just, uh, you know, uh, literally defended a, a traitor to this nation in order to pack that particular thing is what they had on their radar but anyway jenny thomas was asked to come she said oh yeah i'll come i have nothing to hide now all of a sudden she doesn't want to go she she doesn't want to go and they're finding more emails so now it's not just 29 legislators in arizona that she wrote to she apparently we knew she wrote to mark meadows because mark meadows turned over his freaking phone when he was cooperating at the beginning before he went down to magaloco and god only knows what happened in magaloco was it something that was recorded with him breaking the law? Was it something he did at Magaloco? Like, was he caught with a dead goat or a live boy? I don't know. But all of a sudden, he, you know, he's out there telling me my electrical sparks are, are, are like sparking down the high. I don't know. Ginny doesn't want to go now. They just found new emails that she was writing to legislators in Wisconsin, too. Ron Johnson, it doesn't look like he's getting reelected. I think the people of Wisconsin have had it with this guy, with his lunatic, fringy view, with his wanting to get rid of Medicare. You know that Ron Johnson wants to get rid of Medicare, and he told you he wants Social Security also to be sunsetted after five years, no more Social Security, because they're not done stealing, okay? Rick Scott, yes, he was responsible for the largest Medicare fraud in the history of the program of Medicare, Uh, And his company was uh, ordered to pay billions of dollars in restitution. But he's now a U.S. senator saying we got more stealing to do. You know, there is a Medicare trust fund we haven't raided. There's a Social Security trust fund we could have, too. Let's pilfer. Let's steal. Let's create chaos and steal the rest. And Ron Johnson is all for it. Ron Johnson is literally out there endorsing the idea that Social Security sunset after five years, that Medicare sunsets after five years, and that the middle class ought to have their taxes raised to have some skin in the game. Because you know, or maybe you don't know, 57% of Americans don't pay federal income tax. Sometimes at the end of the year, you actually get a refund, right? I mean, it's an amazing thing. Anyway, I just wanted to point that out to Sedona, the the young student from American University, because American University is Howard's alma mater, and I used to live right there at Ward Circle, 
Ward Circle. There's a statue of a general, General Ward, at the base of American University. And uh, it's a traffic circle. It's like DuPont Circle. The whole town is built around circles. It, it, it's like it signaled to you what they were going to do. They were going to make us just chase our own tails. Washington, D.C. But anyway, uh, I just want you to, uh, you know, keep your eye on the prize, honey, because uh, this has nothing to do with the speech. This has to do with the result. And the results have been awesome. And every single solitary Republican voted against, voted against the Inflation Reduction Act, voted against it. Every one of them. How did we get it passed? We got it passed because it was a reconciliation bill. Okay? That's how we got it passed with a, a 50, uh, 51 majority. But no Republicans voted for it. None. And as long as we have a channel here and as long as free speech TV survives and lives and, and, and goes into its 26th year, people will have access to the truth. Did you see the reaction last night to uh, 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 Joe Biden's speech? on uh, the newly uh, indoctrinated CNN. Did you see that? They were outraged, I tell you, outraged that Joe Biden hit the bullseye. They were just beside themselves. How dare he say that uh, Ma- MAGA is, is somehow a threat to this country? Uh, you, can, you know, the, the, it's a bridge too far. And he appeared with Marines in the background and that's something that we've never seen before. Oh, I don't know about that. Because I seem to remember, oh, let's go back to W, recent American history. Let's go back to that, all right? He was on a, 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 a Navy ship, a warship, positioned right off of San Diego, but made us think he was somewhere in the Persian Gulf, risking his life, surrounded by sailors with a mission accomplished banner in the background and using the troops, okay, the sailors, as human shields. Yeah, and and, and I seem to remember Donald Trump walking with General Milley to, uh, you know, gas people in Lafayette Square there in Washington, D.C. And Milley apologized because the military really shouldn't have been used to gas people in Lafayette Square for peacefully protesting. Yeah, no, I, I remember Donald Trump appearing with the Marines, uh, you know, over and over. So I, something really untoward and something really hinky is going on at CNN. All things Randy at RandyRhodes.com. Go, go for long. Speaking truth to power, the Randy Rhodes Show. Yeah, CNN is uh, doing something. They're cleaning house. Uh, and last night I had to, this is my Twitter feed. No, you, yeah, I, I had to uh, tweet this to Jeff Zelny. Jeff Zelny actually said, uh, you know, it was inappropriate for uh, Biden to appear uh, at a speech with the Marines in the background. And I, I, I just simply wrote, I don't know. I don't know. And then I tweeted a picture of uh, Donald Trump standing there with the Marines. I also included this one of George W., uh, you know, with the mission accomplished, uh, you know, using sailors as human shields. And you can clearly see the teleprompter in front of him. It was a speech. He was off the coast of San Diego. They had the ship turned just so, so that the sunset would, uh, you know, uh, make his face light up at, at, you know, with magic hour light. Everybody knows what magic hour is, right? It's when the sun is setting and everything turns uh, a beautiful orange and the grass is so green, it's magic hour. Uh, and he, he did that there to uh, lie to the American people about, we were done in Iraq, we were out of Iraq, a mission accomplished, we were leaving. Uh, we, we, we stayed there for another 20 freaking years. Uh, and then, of course, uh, here's his daddy, Surrounded, uh, you know, by a bunch of uh, freaking Marines. <laughs> so I don't know what's going on over there. I'm not really clear. But I, I will tell you that uh, the, 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 the coverage last night was head scratching. Let's put it that way. It was really weird. They were saying, how dare he, uh, you know, call the... The, the, the president, the past president of the United States, a, a threat to democracy. I mean, didn't he say at a private, private gathering of people earlier in the week that this party was going semi-fascist? Why? That's insulting. Really? 
really because and Laura Ingram, I have ne- she tweeted out last night. I have never seen a president call another president or a whole political party fascist in the history of the United States. And so <laughs> I tweeted this back at her. Joe Biden went to Phil. Oh, no. What did I tweet at her? This one. I think they're fascists. I think they want to use the power of the state to change the. You see, you see, you see the two people there. This was from 2019. See, it's actually dated (laughs) up there in the corner. Uh, That would be Laura, who has never heard ever a party uh, attacking another party with the fascist word. No, you can leave it up because this is a mashup of uh, exactly that happening. We just, uh, you know, started it with Laura. I think they're fascists. Uh I think they want to Uh use the power of the state to change the rest of us. Falsely branding a political protest as an insurrection, that Uh. is the definition of authoritarianism, of fascism. Their tactics are are fascistic. The left (laughs) wants power because that is essentially their state of grace. The blackout of information by the left is pure fascism. <laughs> Turns out there are fascists in charge. Nancy Pelosi is fascistic. They're using, frankly, um, fascist policies to silence the right. They use cancel culture as, as a tool to impose their fascism on us. Well, I won't say fascists, but yeah, fascists. This is fascism. <laughs> this is fascism of the left. You were talking about fascism. There's no other word to describe this. This is fascism. <laughs> what is fascism? What? What is? What were they talking about there? I have no earthly idea. No earthly idea. But I, I, I will tell you that um, last night, was it, yeah, Stephen Miller? Oh, he, he, went, he went all in. President Trump poured out his heart, his soul, his spirit every day to build a better America for everyone in this country, a safer, more prosperous America. While Democrats in the deep deep state (laughs) launched an illegal operation to take him out that is now in its sixth year. President Biden tonight gave the speech of a dictator in the style of a dictator, in the visual of a dictator, using the words of a dictator. This was his enemies of the state speech. (laughs) And like every other radical Marxist tyrant, he accused his opponents of being fascist while he engages in repressive authoritarian behavior. CNN better smarten up. (laughs) That's all I could say. You better you better understand what has been going on on right wing media this whole time that they and last night, that was last night, that was Stephen Miller last night calling Joe Biden yet again a fascist dictator, a fascist dictator for pointing out that the past president of the United States tried to extort the leader of Ukraine to get dirt on his opponent, and nobody impeached him over that until whistleblowers came forward and said not only that, but he was threatening the lives of people like the Ukrainian ambassador from the United States, Marie Yovanovitch, saying, get her out, get her out. I want her out. Call me when it's done. Okay. And after January 6th, when the Republican Party was sitting there going, oh, it was just a bunch of tourists, or oh, it was Antifa, or nothing bad happened, or oh, the police let them in. I don't understand why you're saying this was an insurrection. I don't understand why you're saying that this was a, a, a coup attempt on the United States. You know, now, thank God we got a select committee to drill down on it. We learned all this new stuff about Eastman and about, uh, you know, uh, the, the Green Bay sweep and Navarro and, and Donald Trump saying, uh, you know, uh, okay, so now we're going to pull the, uh, we're going to push the button on the violence and the Proud Boys calling Donald Trump that day and uh, saying, you know, please just, uh, you know, invoke the Insurrection Act and we'll, t- we'll become the militia and the weapons are on the other side of the Potomac. And, I mean, and, and, and they're saying again, that the people who are trying to right this hideous, ugly, traitorous wrong are the traitors. <laughs> They're always the victim. No matter what they do, no matter how illegal their operations are, no matter how much they lie, no matter how many 
acts of violence they encourage. I mean, you just now they want to defund the FBI because the FBI actually executed a search warrant that was legally gotten from a court of law based on a showing of probable cause that crimes have been committed. And now we see the evidence and we realize crimes have been committed. We're just waiting for him to be indicted. And Merrick Garland, he won't indict anybody until after the election because he doesn't want to be told that he's interfering with the result of an election when he doesn't need to or want to interfere with the result of an election. It will wait another 60 days. People are outraged, outraged. Why don't we do it before the election? Why don't we do it? Because it's improper. It's not illegal, but it's improper. And who needs that headache? The crime ha- has already occurred. <laughs> it could be ongoing. We don't know. We'll have to do a damage assessment and figure it out. Will we ever know what the documents were? Maybe not. If they are literally top secret, compartmentalized intelligence, we'll never know what that was. That's the sad truth about it. It'll be like uh, the Kennedy assassination. It'll be one of those great mysteries of all time. But this man is going to be indicted and he's going to die in jail because he committed multiple acts of obstruction, multiple acts of treason, multiple acts of, of theft, multiple acts of trying to stop a legitimate function of Congress on January 6th. And he wanted to hang his vice president. Connect. To speak to Randy, call 561-270-3844. 561-270-3844. Well, given that it's Donald Trump we're talking about, I- I'm not surprised in the slightest, uh, and I wouldn't be surprised if there were more highly classified documents at huh. Bedminster or some some other uh, residents of his. Oh, uh, I just think it's important that everybody, whether they're pro-Trump or anti-Trump or whatever their position is, to try and take a deep breath here, let this process play out. You know, the the the, the filing that was done last night in the United States that uh, included that picture that you've shown there and a lot of information about the documents and about uh, uh, Trump's uh, obstruction is the word they use, the refusal to turn them over to the National Archives is revealing bit by bit uh, the seriousness of the case. And uh, we, we don't know all the details yet. It could be very, very serious. But my uh, strong urging to everybody is stay calm. Let's let it play out. We've got due process in the United States. The facts will come out here. But let's not jump to conclusions that the Justice Department is an arm of the Democratic Party uh, on the one hand or the Trump ought to go to jail tomorrow on the other. Um, that was earlier this week prior to the revelation that there were over 11,000 presidential records at Magaloco, and those also included 48 classified folders that are empty. 18 folders were labeled top secret, uh, 54 were labeled secret, and 31 were labeled uh, classified. 48 were labeled classified, but empty. The hell did this guy do? And why did he take them? Why did he do it? And what did he do? We don't even know that yet. We have no idea what he took, where it went, why he took them, why he lied about taking them, why he hid them in closets, why he hid them in uh, uh, underwear drawers. What the hell, man? What the hell? But I, I, you know, listen, my my theory of Trump was always that, you know, he was so psychotic and so violent and so inclined to violence that and he could never, ever, ever, not only couldn't he apologize for anything he ever did, even though the things that he did were so ugly, so disgusting, so disgraceful, so damaging, but on top of not being able to apologize, he's so psychotic that if he can't have America, if he can't be the president of us, if he can't be the leader, if he can't be the authoritarian, if he can't be the I alone can fix it guy, then nobody can. Nobody can be the president. If he can't have America, then he'll burn it all down. That's who he is. 
And the idea that America, listen, you know, I try and make it so that I, I can understand why people voted for him. Now, I understand a very small percentage, you know, like I said, there's there's 30 percent of America, maybe, and that's very generous, that still identify as Republican. Of those, maybe 25 to 30 percent of those are maggots, okay? And so it's a very small sliver of Americans who are this ugly, this racist, this violent, this Q-believing, this anti-Semitic, this, uh, you know, uh, disgusted with America. But I still try to understand them. I still try to understand why they're so full of grievance and resentment and hate that they would burn this country down to the ground, you know, on behalf of an orange mango Mussolini. And the idea that they have been so, uh, I don't know what to say, unprosperous or so scared of being replaced by new groups of immigrants, by new groups of people, by, you know, it's not the Irish anymore, it's not the Italian anymore that are coming. Now you might have uh, Haitians. Now you might have, uh, you know, uh, uh, Chinese. Well, we, we, Chinese were original, okay? They built our railroads, so that would be a bad example. I apologize. But you know what I'm saying. Like, uh, maybe you have, uh, you know, a new uh, bunch of people from Bangladesh, or you have a new bunch of people from... Uh, I don't know, Afghanistan or a new bunch of people from Ukraine that are migrating to the United States and they just don't like it. It's uncomfortable for them because they only understood Irish immigration or they only understood Scottish immigration or they only understood, you know, uh, Italian immigration. And even that was a bridge too far for them. You come out to our nice, clean country with your oily hair and your greasy suits, right? (laughs) That was too much. So... I'm trying to understand what made them so freaked out, so angry, so completely prone to violence. And all I could say to them about this is we got you. We got you. You don't have to be so disappointed in your country. You now have a president that sees you too. You now have a president that cares about you too, that thinks that you, and he said it last night to the heckler, You have a right to be as outrageous as you want to be. And that the lack of good manners is not a disqualifying trait in American life. He told that to the people that were screaming, let's go Brandon, and uh, screaming at him to go F himself. That's what he said to them. He said, you might, you know, you, 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 You can be as outrageous as you want to be. This is America. What you can't be is violent. What you can't advocate for is violence against law enforcement or violence against your neighbor, like Charlottesville, okay? You can't march through the streets with tiki torches screaming about Jews will not replace us and then act on it, okay? That will not be something that will be overlooked, So he's trying to include you too. You have to let yourself be included. That's the best advice I have for you. Lay off the violence, lay off the social media violence, lay off the, oh, I need to call Randy and trigger her. You know it doesn't work. You know that we understand how democracy works and what makes it not work and the impediment that we had before joe biden and a democratic house in a split senate was mango mussolini who did nothing for you in fact what he did was redistribute your wealth to the top and that's the only thing he did that's the only thing he did let us do our work and let America recover from a pandemic and from a supply chain breakdown and from a a Russian invasion into Ukraine, which blocked a whole load of oil from the marketplace. I mean, the price of gas is plummeting. Wages are rising. The recession isn't causing massive layoffs. In fact, we had a good jobs report today. I would say it was excellent. 
people who have experience in government can use it for good or for ill. We have a president of the United States who uses it for you, for you, your benefit. This is the Randy Rhodes Show. To speak with Randy, dial 561-270-3844. That's 561-270-3844. Can you believe it? FBI agents just doing their job as directed, facing threats to their own lives from their own fellow citizens. On top of that, There are public figures today, yesterday, and the day before predicting and all but calling for mass violence and rioting in the streets. This is inflammatory. It's dangerous. It's against the rule of law. And we, the people, must say, this is not who we are. Yeah, I mean, they are all for a violent, chaotic, uh, you know, sort of uh, outgun you type of uh, Somalian landscape, and uh, it is not an American landscape. You know, America is far from perfect, which he acknowledged last night. We have a long way to go, but the idea that there are people that work to move us forward, to bend the arc of justice toward democracy, and then there are people who have given up on it, uh, he's not one of them. He's not one who's given up on democracy. I'm not one who's given up on democracy. You're not somebody that's willing to surrender democracy uh, in in exchange for Somalian libertarianism. I don't I don't know what you would call that. That chaotic thing where everybody's armed in the streets and everybody's your enemy and you just shoot and shoot and shoot until nobody's alive anymore or there's no food. I I, I don't even know what what it is that you're after. I, I know what we want to do, and by we I mean the majority of Americans. We want to fix water, okay? You see what's going on in Mississippi. You see that people are waiting in mile-long lines for one simple case of bottled water that they will have to use to bathe in, that they will have to use to cook with, that they will have to use to, 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 to hydrate. In the middle of August, okay, it's now the beginning of September in Mississippi, okay? It's 95 degrees. We want to fix that. We want to fix the climate issue. We want to make it so that we, who are now experiencing these massive rainstorms and these uh, incredible droughts and all of the machinations of climate change, we would like to remediate. We would like to uh, ameliorate. We would like to turn that off by stopping the belching of methane and carbon into the atmosphere by building better beasts, building better cars, building better factories, building better ways to capture carbon, building everything that we know how to build here in America. That's what the Chips and Science Act was was about, and Republicans voted against it. They voted against it. We want to negotiate the price of prescription drugs for our seniors. They voted against it. We wanted to give subsidies to people so that they can continue to afford their health care coverage because very few Americans are going without health care these days. It's still too many. It's probably about 11 to 15 percent of Americans that don't have health care coverage, which is just bizarre and horrible in the world's richest nation. We just saw a life expectancy. This was another little uh, ditty from this week. Life expectancy in the United States dropped by yet another year. It dropped by yet another year. 76, I think now, is the average life expectancy in in America. We need to fix democracy. We need to make sure that everybody has an easy time of voting, that people don't have books banned, that people aren't seeing math books taken out of the classroom because lunatic, fringy governors think that there's some hidden message in the numbers or so. I don't know. We have to fix manufacturing and stop being so dependent on, uh, you know, uh, 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 China for semiconductors, which are involved in everything from your television to your car, to your blender, to your oven. We need to fix taxation in this country. The rich get such an easy, easy ride. 
a billion dollars worth of profits and no taxation, none, really, that's normal? No, it's not normal and it's not okay. We have to fix privacy rights. Women have been told that they don't matter. Women have been told that they're property. Women have been told that nobody cares about women. Well, I got news for you. Women care about women and women are the newest voter registration uh, recipients. They are the, the they are outperforming men in voter registration numbers ahead of this election, which is less than uh, two months away. And men are sh- are showing up for women too, going. This is ridiculous. It affects our lives too. If I'm a 16 year old boy in today's America, what I did when I was 16 would have changed the trajectory of my life if there had been no ch- uh, a right to choose. And a lot of guys know that. They're honest with themselves and they freaking know it. We have to fix the quality of candidates that the Republican Party is selecting. Because honestly, you know, if they had to do a rebuttal last night and they had to choose from their Senate candidate, what are we going to have? A Herschel Walker babbling for, for five minutes about uh, Chinese air and, and hidden children. And, and they asked him this week. I, I, I can't even pull it because it's so incomprehensible. But they asked him about women's issues. And you know what he said? They asked him, what do you think about women's issues going into this election? And he said, well, I'm worried about them because they have to buy groceries. And groceries are expensive. That's the woman's issue for him that we're going to the supermarket. I mean, it's just, we want better. And we can get better on all these fronts. We can do better than we've been doing because now we have a serious president. But you have to give him a serious Congress. Brother David. Sister, it's Fired Up Freedom Fighter Friday. You bastard. He, yeah, he was on fire yesterday. I think he nailed um, it. I really President do. President Pop, you just, yeah, he did nail it. I mean, honestly, you know, his point is that the Republicans have tolerated in their ranks a bunch of fascist thugs, and exactly. it's kind of hard to miss the bullseye, which is their dear leader. Exactly. So he, he nailed it. And in response to that very intelligent question from the young lady in the last section, as I said to the chat room, hi, chat room, you know what to do. Um, I think the proof that non-democratic voters are getting this need look no further than last month's the velocity and breadth of the response to the Kansas abortion amendment and last this week's special election in Alaska. And New York's York's 19th. Right. Thank you. Yep. There's a blue NAMI coming. Uh, We have to make it happen, and we the peeps. But he he was just so laid out. I actually posted his speech on my crackbook page, which I rarely do political stuff on, um, because he was just speaking the truth. And that is the reason uh, not just the right-wing media, but the CNNs, et cetera, the world, they've been on the fix kind of literally since the Fairness Doctrine went away, and certainly since Bubba over-deregulated the FCC, as you well know. Mm -hmm. But they've helped create this monster, and now this monster isn't holding because there are still more of us, and there are more of us that get it. Right, and there there always have been, and that's why they're so prone to wanting to cheat, which is why I say we have to fix voting, because Yo, yeah. they, they literally want to take it out of our hands now because there Absolutely. are more of us, and they would like to give it to Mississippi State Legislature. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah uh, exactly. Uh, well, look at the bang-up job they did for Jackson. You know what I'm saying? You <laughs> this is this is intolerable, insufferable, and it has to end. It has to end. And it will, Randy. The people are coming. Thank you. I love you. Love you always. <laughs> Alex in Michigan. No. Marcus in Las Vegas. Oh, hi, Randy. Uh, <clears throat> there's, uh, you know, the fact that this man has been, Trump has been a criminal his whole entire life uh, and, 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 and driven by the pursuit of money. Um, I was just hoping as a New Yorker that you'd be a little bit more familiar with uh you know, this guy's life prior to the presidency and that you could take a few minutes to relate that to the audience, because I don't think a lot of people really realize, you know, this guy didn't just start being a criminal when he became a president. 
uh, the president. He was a, he's been a criminal his entire life. Well, here's some good news for for people uh, who may not have heard this. Uh, this might be brand new for you, but the Ways and Means Committee in the House of Representatives, since it's under Democratic chairman, right? Uh, they were yep. able to appeal for his tax returns to be given to them for their review to see if there was any criminality and fraud in the tax code that, you know, that, that he stole uh, from the government. And yesterday they received his taxes. After yes, all yes. these years, they finally, because fi- yeah. they don't give up. They, they actually want to have a little look-see. Now, as a New Yorker, Yes, I, I, I've run into him on Fifth Avenue, you know, of uh, Jessica, you know, was, he sat, I sat in front of him at a Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young concert, which seemed to piss him off that I had a better seat, and it was just one row in front of him. But honestly, I don't know any more than you do about his criminal liability with regard to fraud or espionage, but we all will soon enough. <laughs>